So ladies and gentlemen, the time has come for fight number 12, our co-main event of the evening. And of course it will be for the XFC Amateur Super Lightweight Championship and contested over three three-minute rounds. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. He weighed in at 73.8 kilos and trains out of integrated MMA, holding an amateur record of two wins for one defeat. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jamie Spall. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. He weighed in at 74.8 kilos and trains out of Game Bread Academy, holding an amateur record of four wins and three defeats. He is the reigning, defending, undisputed XFC super lightweight champion, Lonnie Lontonimo Filimohala. No matter what Jamie Sport wants to say, Lonnie Doyle is the undisputed right, champion. Make sure you He's going to bring a all times, phenomenal all times. challenge to Jamie Sport right, right now. Come out for it. Oh, this is amazing. So when the Everyone action begins, your referee in charge, and Thomas Churchill. Thank you to Thomas Churchill. Thank you to Thomas Churchill for giving the opportunity to touch gloves and then to walk away from it. How good was it before? Lonnie walked behind Jamie. The next time he had the opportunity, Jamie cut the space off and didn't even let him walk behind him. And Lonnie lands early. Nice tape from Jamie. Boys are looking sharp. <laughs> now, after all that talk, the boys finally get a chance to put their hands on each other. How good is this? Looking for the double. Gets him up against the cage. Looking to clasp the hands. Dan talked me through it. So here we go. Jamie with the hands locked. He should get a Huge finish take here. Down. Big takedown early for Jamie Spawn. Lonnie's not in a bad spot here, though. He's got his back on the fence, so he can start to try and wall, work, wall walk. Sorry, as we see him now switching out and making his way back to his feet. And he does just that. So back on the feet now. Jamie Spawn with a trip opportunity here if he pulls to his left, though. And as expected, there he goes. Wow, what a start to this one, gents. Yeah, good call, Dan. That's fantastic commentating, mate. And let me tell you, this is where Jamie does his best work. He loves being on top. He don't mind being on bottom, but let me tell you, he does his best work from top, ladies and gentlemen. And he's now passed into side control. We can see Lonnie trying to get that uh, far side underhook. Lonnie's going to try and get Opportunity his... Opportunity to go to mounts right there, and he takes it. Oh, good defense by Lonnie. So Lonnie using that underhook now to get back to his feet. Jamie realises it. He oh, no shot. hard shots. You hard can't take right any hands. more of those. Wow. Listen to the crowd. This is the loudest the crowd's been all night. Unbelievable stuff here from Lonnie Philly Mohala. Back to his feet. Jamie spawned, though, with a strong start. So a tail of two fights early on in this one. Oh, and the crowd's getting behind Lonnie. The champion's got some big support here. First chance the crowd gets involved, I believe it's a Lonnie chant. It is loud. Both of these boys have absolutely packed this house with their warriors. Oh no, I hear a Jamie call from across the room too, lads. Look, I think Jamie actually has more supporters here, but Lonnie has those that big Tongan family of his, and I tell you what, they're loud. I spoke to Lonnie Phil Mahala uh, about a month ago at, uh, at a different show. And one thing he said he was going to do, even though he's got a great wrestling game himself, he actually wants to throw some hands. He actually wants to knock Jamie Spawn out. What? And funnily enough, Jamie spoke to me. And he don't mind throwing hands either. He's been doing a lot of work on it. Oh, oh big, big right hand. hand! Oh, Jamie Spawn's hurt! Lonnie turning up the pressure! Oh! Oh, great knee hands! He's rolling! He's very dangerous off his back! Lonnie's got to mind his piece and cues. Careful of the knee bar. He rolls the right way. Nice work. Lonnie's got to get up here or take top position. He does not want to be under Jamie Spawn. And beautiful work. Moves away. Wow. Careful of the triangle attempt now, though. There it is. Jamie Spawn's He's locked, locked it. it up. Look at He's the crowd. Locked it up. Is up. He's going to look to cut the angle. Wow. Arms in danger. Necks in danger. How much time have we got to go? And there it is! The time is the over. The Phenomenal! Wow! What a first round! Phenomenal fight! Oh, wow! wow. <laughs> and, the, oh, and the boys are puffing. Have a look at them, ladies and gentlemen. This is where you really need to start looking at the screen. 
You need to see how deep they're breathing. You need to see their corners instruction. You need to slow it right down and really take in what's happening in the corner right now. So star started corners on both sides. The team from Integrated, headed by Adrian Pang, giving the instructions there to Jamie Spawn. And of course, we have the team from Gamebred uh, there talking along. He looks like Simon Plow and Mr. Jason Lonigan. And I just can't believe how loud it is in here. Yeah, Lonnie definitely tested uh, Jamie Spawn's chin there, didn't he? You know, I actually had a chance to speak to, to David Chander, a teammate of Jamie Spawn. And I actually, I asked him, you know, how will Jamie Spawn's chin hold up in this fight? David Chen, one of the best strikers in the Brisbane season, is going to be fine. Jay, David Chen, one of the best strikers in, in, in Australian MMA, has tested the chin. He knows he can take these punches. Round two, boys. <laughs> two more rounds of this. Yes, please. And here we go. Straight back to the centre. Both the boys don't want to take a backward step. Lonnie Philly Mohala holding the centre of the cage. And you know what, after round one, you know, Jamie top, he got top, Lonnie got top. Now though, I reckon they're gonna strike a little bit, boys. Nice left hook lands there from Lonnie Philly Mohala. Jamie Spawn looking for the uppercut. One thing that a lot of Lonnie's training partners make note of is his counter opportunities. So very slick with his head movement and really, really quick with his hands when, uh, when he's slipping punches. Nice jab from Lonnie, stuck through before. You see that head movement? Oh, big right hand lands from Jamie. And here's Shoots the shot. Nice, oh, take nice, nice stuff by Lonnie. He's wrapping the neck, lads. Wrapping the neck. I'm looking at Ryan Dunstan. He's yelling at him. Yep. Jamie looking for a single here. And Lonnie straight back on him. So beautiful work. I loved what Lonnie did just then. He looked straight at Ryan Dunstan. Ryan Dunstan said, get up. Lonnie obeying his corner's advice there. And I'm with Ryan Dunstan. I think that was the great move. Huge maturity from Lonnie Doyle to do that as well. Lonnie Philly Mahala. He was in a little bit of trouble. Again, all the emotion running through the fight at the moment. Still had the perseverance, still had the, the maturity to look at his coach and get that instruction, didn't he? Oh, nice jab. Oh, nice there jab for Lane. Lane. They, they both look comfortable on the feet. And you know what? Both of these guys are kind of ground specialists. So, you know, kind of going into this, this is probably what we thought. It's interesting you bring that up, Wombat, because a lot of the time you have to... Oh, big shots landed from Lonnie. Wow. Jamie Spawn's loss, he did, he did lose on his amateur debut, but that being said, he only ever trained at a jiu-jitsu gym. He never had the chance to train in a team like Integrated with the strikers and the calibre. Oh, Jamie Spawn wobbled then. Oh, oh big shot to the body. Big How shot to the body. Lonnie right now. Lonnie Philly Mohala looking in career best form. Jamie Spawn with a nice one too though. And overextending on that right hand was Jamie Spawn, the left hook. Flipping at Jamie from Lonnie. Oh, big shots. And how patient does Lonnie look right now as a Beautiful. Champ. He knows that he doesn't want to get into a grappling situation at this point. So he's not giving Jamie Spawn any opportunities to uh, tie up with him and potentially look to get this down to the mat. And you know what? When the second round started and the boys were breathing heavy, he Ooh. sort of took his time. He took his time the first minute or so in the round, got, him, got his legs underneath him. Now he's just piling on the pressure. Well, Jamie's looking for a shot here. Nice sprawl from Lonnie. Jamie should try and keep pushing to the cage. I think he will, and I think he might get this, lads. 25 seconds to go. Let's see if Lonnie can keep defending here. And surely you can hear that through oh. the microphones. Isaac Hardman in the corner of Jamie's. Oh, he nice sweeps the BJJ brown belt. Wow. Lonnie, the recently promoted blue belt with a nice butterfly sweep there on Jamie Spawn to get back to the feet. MMA, baby, this is MMA. Wow. Wow, oh, what a oh. second round. This is unbelievable. One thing that Lonnie did make note of in his commentary questions, he said, listen, I'm a BJJ blue belt in the gi, but in no gi, I'm a four-stripe BJJ black belt. And I think one of the stories with uh, when, when Lonnie won the championship belt is he fought at 75 kilos, he fought Michael the Power at 75 kilos, but when it came to, to fighting on the night, he was up to about 85, 88 kilos. He was a monster of a super lightweight. That being said, Jamie normally fights at world's weight. He's a big boy as well. So we're not seeing that massive weight difference that Lonnie had as an advantage against Michael the Power. I tell you what, with that, again, I'm incredibly embarrassed I didn't have to pay for this seat. <laughs> <laughs> hey! <laughs> I'll take it out of the payment. <laughs> hey, listen, honestly, guys, I'm not sure after two rounds, it's possibly 1-1. One, one. 
It's possibly two zip. Yeah. So if you're in the corner, what are you saying? If I'm in Jamie Spawn's corner, I'm saying we need a finish. Yeah. First two rounds were close. They could have gone either way, but I'm probably leaning Lonnie on both those rounds. Yeah. So if I'm the team from Integrated, I'm saying let's get him down, let's get his neck, and let's call it a day. And look at Spawn. Like, he still wants this. You know that he still wants this. Lonnie oh. Philomahala, the current champion, the crowd behind him. Jamie Spawn, a lot of supporters, the crowd behind him. What a fight! I'll tell you what, Wumba Jonesy, XFC director, XFC president, if you are looking for all, someone to put on the resume for why amateur title fights need to be five rounds, whoever says they need to be three rounds, send them this fight. Because I want to see another three rounds of this. Well, well, look, we'll, we'll definitely talk about it. Don't you worry about that, ladies and gentlemen. So here we go, third Lonnie, and look, final actually, round. And Lonnie cut just on the eyebrow there. It might actually be bleeding into his eye, lads. Yeah, small cut there on Lonnie. Philly Mohala. Nice one, two lands from Jamie Spawn there. How good is it to see Jamie nice and comfortable on his feet as well? As I said, he's the best brown belt in the country. Oh! Nice kick by Lonnie. And this is what I wanted to see. Both boys had so much emotion coming into this fight, but when it comes down to the crunch, they know how to get their head switched on. Yeah, great to see neither of them fighting emotionally. They're fighting smart. And, uh, wow, what a close fight, too. 100%. Lonnie. I mean, they're both in the pocket. They're, they're not showing away from each other. Lonnie, the champion, putting the pressure on Jamie. Jamie needs to respond here, lads. Yeah, Lonnie's switching stances as well, cutting back from, you know, your southpaw to your orthodox. Yeah, I'm super impressed with Lonnie's striking. This is by far the best we've ever seen him look on the feet. Jamie Spawn looking sharp too, though. Both of them actually looking much more comfortable than I thought they would in this area of the fight. I tell you what, the thing I love about this fight is both boys have put in such a performance that no matter what, at the end of this fight, they both would have earned each other's respect. Oh, 100%. And I think you'll see the boys hug it out after this round. Jamie wow. tucked, <laughs> sucking in some deep breaths. Both boys have still got a lot left in the gas tank. A one. minute to go, it'd be uh, really impressive to see both of these boys lifting each other off the canvas at the end. Yeah, one minute to go here, fellas. I'm not quite sure where this third round's sitting. So this could be a super important minute in the context of this fight. And interesting, no one shot this round, lads. Yeah, when the energy levels start to drop, those uh, takedown attempts take a lot out of the gas tank. So I'm not sure if uh, either fighter are going to be looking for one of those. Maybe to steal the round, though. One, but oh, big shot there, there from Lonnie, and he calls him on. If anyone does shoot, I think it will be Jamie Spawn. Lonnie looks happy to keep it on the feet. Beautiful nice head, head movement. From Lonnie. Listen to the crowd! Oh, I love it! 30 seconds to go. Lonnie switching southpaw yet again. Back to orthodox for the current champion. Last 20 seconds of this fight. Both of these boys have talked it up so much. Here's their chance to finish the fight. Let's see who takes it. Doesn't matter if you're a Jones family, a Smith family, an Adlington family, who? Yes! You've got to be loving this. Oh! Isaac Harden calling on Jamie Spawn to come forward. Lonnie Philly Mohala landing strong. What a wow. Wow. Look at the boys. Like I said, look at the respect after. This is why I love MMA. Daniel Morsley, Matthew Walton. This is why I love MMA. This right here is why it's the best sport in the world, gentlemen. These two have talked nothing but smack about each other in the lead up and they've earned each other's respect in blood and sweat. And not only each other's respect, but even Isaac Hartman had a chance to chirp in terms of the lead up. The first thing Isaac Hartman does is go in there and give Lonnie Doyle, Lonnie Philly Mahala, Lontonimo a massive handshake as well. Absolutely phenomenal sportsmanship from everyone involved here. XFC president put that down straight out of the commentary booth, straight up there to, to congratulate the boys and everyone involved. Brian Emersol, XFC matchmaker, former UFC fighter, 95 pro veteran of the cage, straight in there giving his props to these fighters. Again, boys, would you believe that was an amateur fight? That right there tells you the level of amateur MMA in Australia. Absolutely phenomenal as the boys embrace in the middle of the cage. Daniel Maudsley, my co-commentator over at the uh, judges' booth, getting the final result. You have to think if it's taking this long to draw, there could be the possibility of a split decision. 
once again very tough to uh, to get a winner from that fight. Both both rounds, first and second round, incredibly close. Third round, incredibly close as well. We're about to find who walks away with the belt. So ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. The judges score the bout 29-28, 29-28, and 30-27 for your winner by unanimous decision. And still, the undisputed XFC super lightweight champion, Lonnie Lontronimo Filimohala! So ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with your and still champion, Lonnie Lontonimo Philip Ohala. Takes the win by unanimous decision. Lonnie, it's no secret there was a lot of animosity coming into the cage here tonight. Saw some hilarious back and forth between you two on social media. But give us your thoughts on how the fight eventually transpired here this evening. Well, I don't, I don't remember what round, but I thought I rocked him and I was like, oh shit, I'm fucking gonna finish him, but then, He's a lot tougher than I thought. It pops out to him. It does show you, like, he has trained in a real good gym and see what he's done. Like, I've had eight fights now, and he's, that was the first time out of his first round, when the distance, and I rocked him, and he stood up, and, like, like, it was his first time past the first round, and he, like, went all the way, went through a wall with someone who, not saying I'm great, but I've had, like, this is my eighth fight. So, props out to Jamie. Well, very humble in victory there, Lonnie Philly Mohala. Ladies and gentlemen, this is why mixed martial arts is the greatest sport in the world. Great to see you two squash the beef in phenomenal fashion, entertaining the crowd. That's, well, for us, that's, that's, that's the only way to squash the beef, really. But, like, me and him, I got nothing but respect for Jamie. So props out to him. Well, great to see you two uh, sharing those kind words at the conclusion of what was a great fight. Now, Lonnie, I'm sure you've got a lot of people to thank. I know the teams to the teams behind you, Game Bread and Ignite, mean a lot to you. Yeah, Jason, Jason Lonigan, come on, show yourself. Jason Lonigan, he's he's like does everything for me. He's like one of the my mom's up here, my sister's over there, and he's up there with him. I see him every day. He, he takes me under his wing, and he, uh, like he does so much for me. I'm, uh, I talk to him about my problems, he, he's there for me all the time. Like a really good friend. Someone I can look up to and it's real good. Also, my mom, Ali Brown. She does so much for me, doesn't ask for nothing. Well, that's just like a really, really good mom. My little sister, I give her so much shit, but she's so supportive. And my girl, Kaylin. Uh, my car doesn't work. <laughs> so, my girl, Kaylin, she let me drive her car every single day. It was just, just fucked her up, but I don't care, because uh, I won, so. Well, you certainly did that, Lonnie. One more question before I let you go, mate. What is the rest of the year looking like for Big Lonton here as we maintain that strap around your waist? Oh, I got a secret, but my boy Jace is going to show it, tell everybody. But I'm just saying that everybody's going to know my name. So, I'm saying my biggest goal, I want to be the first Tonga World Champion. I'm saying that now. And... I know my, my coach Jace, my team at Game Red, uh, Ignites, Ryan Dunstan, and Simon Clark, I know they'll get me there. Well, Lonnie, congratulations on another phenomenal performance. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for your still super lightweight champion, Lonnie Lontonimo, Philly Mohala.